everybody. Uh, if you haven't met me before, this is Sarah Gallagher, and I am the owner of Widowed Solo Parenting. You're not alone. I'm a blogger, and I'm also a grief coach, and I'm here on my weekly lives to tell you something that you need to know. So let's get into it. Today, we are talking about uh, why it's important to let your kid talk about their dead parent and how this normalize, normalizes grief across the board. Uh, I find that non-grievers are they're often shocked about how freely and are easily our family talks about our connection with death, and it happens all the time. I mean, I think it's a, I think they're afraid uh, that talking about death could be damaging, like whether to the kid or to like to themselves or whatever. But I have to tell you, I vehemently disagree. Talking about, I find that my kids when they talk about their sky daddy, it validates their feelings, and it also encourages their mental health. So then now what I'm going to talk about tonight is about why I believe that you should let your kid talk about their dead parent uh, and all the benefits that they're going to get from it. And you're going to get from it as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been on any of my lives before, but I'm very frank about death and how it affects on people. Uh, I've been a widow of, I'm coming up to seven years now, and I... I just want you know that I've been there. I've gone through it. My family is going through it. They'll have a dead parent all, all their lives, as I will have a dead husband, and it's part of life now. And that's why I will try to about talking about normalizing, and especially with their kids and how to help them. And this is just part of the series. All right. So we're giving you a kind of background of me for me. Uh, my son's father died when he was two and a half. Uh, so now when he's at school, the kids will ask him as they do all the time because kids are curious. So they'll ask, they'll ask, Hey, where's your dad? He'll plainly tell them that he died. And there's always, 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 there's this in, intake of breath from the adults if they're around because the kids are just, the, the kids are just intrigued, right? The kid, their adults are like, oh! the kids are like, what, what, what happened? And the parents always step in at this point and they try to dissuade their kid of saying, okay, I'm to, to suck, oh, it's, it's okay, honey. Let's we don't talk talk about it, and I always interrupt with the no, no, no. It's okay. We can talk about it. His dad's heart got too sick, and he died. Plain and simply. Uh, now, I want to go over a couple of facts about what happens here. So, this happens as oh, no, no things because parents generally are afraid about talking about death, and you've probably dealt with this yourself because you've probably tried to talk about your feelings to your friends and your family or people who are supporters and they don't quite understand what you're going through. They're really afraid of your of your grief. Uh, but they're also, it's talking about death is really tough because it brings up all our fears of much mortality, which are really uncomfortable to sit, sit with. Like, heck, I'm a graver myself and I don't like these feelings. I would try to like get away from them, but I don't have a choice. Humans, naturally, obviously, they try to avoid their mortality. And so it makes perfect sense to avoid talking about something that could bring it intense pain and distress. There's also this fear that if the kids talk about death, it could mentally damage them. That it, it, so you would somehow scar them by talking about it too early in their development. And of course, parents don't want to damage their kids. You won't. See, the thing is, when a parent senses a conversation about death bubbling up in the background, their first instinct is to shield their kids from the disturbing feelings that are burbling up in the parents' own bodies. But the kids, they don't have the same sense of distress because they truly have no understanding. They have no concept of what death really is. It's such an existential concept that not until like the 20s that their mature brains are finally matured enough to understand, even start to understand this concept. So although you might be anxious or the parents might be anxious about talking about death with their kid or your kid, it's really, it's your own uncomfortable feelings that you're managing. Your kids will be fine, okay? Children are curious, <laughs> obviously, right? They're naturally curious about the, little wor about the world um, and they try to soak up all the information as they can. Uh, they're not gonna understand everything yet, but you know that doesn't stop them from trying, does it? Children, um, they just they just want to find out things. They try to seek out all the details about life, including death. And as hard as we might wish otherwise, they're going to find out about it sooner or later. It's ne inevitable, but it doesn't have to be scary. They are going to want to. They're going to need. They're going to want to know, and they're going to need to know what happened to their parents. How did they die? Like what happened? This is a question that seeks truth, but it's also seeking comfort. 
um, it's because they really want to know, I mean, that whether it's their fault or if they're going to die next or if you're going to die next. So it's essential that you talk to them and you speak plainly and clearly. Be literal. I've talked about this in some other talks with your kids. Don't say they've passed away, they've gone away, or are sleeping. Otherwise, your poor kid's going to be confused. They'll literally take it, and they'll wait for hours at the door waiting for them to come back if they've gone away, or they'll be terrified of going to sleep right? because they, they, they're sleeping. Um, passed away also doesn't make any much sense either, or does it? Just tell them the basic outline of how they died without fe feeling obligated to tell them of all the details okay my son and my daughter they don't need to know that their dad was hooked up to machines after his cardiac arrest happened for two days before we knew if he was brain dead or not they, they just don't need to know that all they need to know is that daddy's heart got sick it stopped working and his body died plain and simple body died he didn't feel it it's it's gone he's it's in a better like don't say a better place i'm sorry ignore that um but it's also no, important that they know the truth because often little kids will think they're they are responsible somehow kids are self-absorbed little creatures right they're little, little narcissists they honestly believe that their ideas actions or their thoughts or words can actually influence the course of events in the material world this is called magical thinking and to be honest it's not just reserved for the little kids so by clearly explaining the fact of how the parent died it's important because it helps them learn the distinction of what they are in, in control of they didn't die because the parent didn't die because timmy didn't eat his carrots or because peter's was a bad girl because they had they they died because of reasons that had nothing to do with timmy or beatrice it's just because mommy and daddy died, it doesn't mean that it's catching and that the kids are next. Next thing we got to talk about is the idea that um, some people think that the they're too young to know about death and they're not. Uh, the common misconception is that kids are too young to know it and all kids are affected by death. Even infants know when a consistent parent is no longer around. I mean, there are studies on this and I've talked about this before in other lives. Even if the kids can't understand the concept, they know it exists. They know there's a point where life doesn't end. Um, if there's about bookends, right? And there's life and there's death. And nature is abundantly clear that life and death are part of the natural cycle. The seasons take a plane, you know, because the trees, they shed their dying leaves. And then in the spring, they regrow new ones. Toddlers, they're fascinated with us. They, they squish ants with their fingers all the time. They're fascinated when it starts moving. And they'll do it again. And again, they'll repeat this experiment. And on to the next ant it keeps wandering by just because they want to know what's going on. Dead birds, small mammals, there is no common sights, like even in city streets, but if you're in a country, even more so, right? Death, death happens in nature all around us, and our curious kids, they do observe it. Funnily enough, four-year-olds are particularly obsessed with death. So remember all those whys that the three-year-olds start to get to? Well, eventually, it morphs into the eternal huge question, what is death? What's going on? Kids are are aware about these absolutes but that there is that the beginning and end and death is the mother of them all right however your your toddler they're not starting to be a philosopher on you that they're not getting all metaphysical they're they're just trying to figure out the concept that birth just as birth is the beginning of life death is the end so death is a part of life just as grieving is a part of love and you can't have one without the other and that's okay it's perfectly normal now talking about get death and their dead parent is healing so kids have a special relationship with grief uh, they live with one foot in and one foot out of it and all their childhood okay it may seem that billy's doing fine he's having fun playing with the other kids but then the next minute minute they're like a crying mess and you have no idea because they're what's going on because they're like snotty and everything and like they're not making any sense our kids really can't handle they aren't mature enough mentally to handle long periods of grief, which I, I know it's not fair that we can, uh, but anyway, that being said, the kids will easily jump in and out of grief as it happens. Now, when these waves of, emo of emotions hit, it can be especially scary for a child as it can totally take over their body. If a parent encourages repression of these emotions, then the child buries them deep inside and they will this develop substantial neurological problems, okay? We want to avoid this. 
by openly talking about their experiences, even if it's the same story over and over and over and over again, you're helping develop these neurological connections to understand what just happened. And you're trying to figure this out, help your kid too, right? By bringing these powerful feelings to the surface, it releases the pain and the turmoil that the child is dealing with. And just as importantly, by acknowledging their deep feelings, you are validating them. You want your own feelings validated by your friends. Your kids need to have their feelings validated as well. Grief can be very lonely when people don't want to be there with you. Your child needs to feel validated and to be comforted to know that when they talk about their lost parent, it's okay. The next thing is the fact that sharing brings connections. Now, as we just talked about in the last point, when a child reaches out by talking about their dead parent, even if it's just a casual, my dad's dead, to a complete stranger, which my son did often when he was growing up, when he was littler, like two, three, uh, they're, trying, they're seeking connection with other people. Grieving is a very lonely process, or it can be a very lonely process, and it can feel that you are the only one ever that's felt this way, which is totally ridiculous, realistically, but grief doesn't know up from down, right? When kids want to talk about their dead parent, let them. Even if you can't understand what they are going through, just listen, acknowledge them, let them know that they're not alone. Now let's go back to the, to the playground, okay? Children are curious. They're going to ask their peer, where is their missing parent? They're going to be aware of this, right? Their child, your child, needs to own this knowledge of what happened to their parent. Uh, where is they? they that they, ha they need, they're going to need to share. They need to tell their story. It's their dead father. It's their story, too. This is your family story. The child is asking your kid they need to know the answer because they're curious little guys right and again they're juggling all these different concepts too and when your child can explain their own situation to answer this question it's going to feel so good for them because they've taught their peers something this will bring an enormous sense of authority which they will need <laughs> sometimes especially when this is such a, a, a tremulous thing to go through by talking about their dead parent and connecting with their peers, they've connected to their peers on this very basic level, and that makes them feel normal again. And it kind of brings them back into the group again, and the kids accept them, and they, it makes them appear again, part of the group. And these connections that these ki the kids are making, they bring security, okay? Letting your, your kid talk about their dead parent opens up all the conversation with their peers, but also with other adults, teachers, doctors, and all the supportive network around them. And the more people come together, the more the child will feel supported, which is incredibly important because they now know how quickly life can change. As their safety network grows, their fear of the unknown lessens. If something untowards happens to their remaining parents, they know that there will be adults around to support them and comfort them. Not that anything really realistically happened to their parent, the remaining parent, but they know that fear is now there, right? And then, but now you have the connections there, they know what's going on, then the fear subsides. My kids know that if I happen to pass away, that they're, who's the neighbors to go to if there's anything happens. Uh, they know their address and they know who's going to be taking care of them. They know that my cousin Christy is going to be adopting them. Um, so that's, that's very important to make them feel safe and secure. And this was brought up even when my kid was, uh, when my son was three. So this is, they're not too young then. Let's, let's try to bring, um, so the whole entire point of this is to normalize grief one step at a time. As the story of your loved lost one becomes part of the conversation, instead of it being a taboo subject, their death and its impact on your family becomes normalized. Western society doesn't handle the grief well. By realizing that life is part of death and that grief is part of love, it starts to normalize the conversation. Let your child talk about their dead parent. Let yourself continue to have conversations about them as your child grows and develops over time because they are going to be talking about them for their lifetime. They have a dead, dead parent now and it's going to come up again, again and again during the different milestones, probably forever. That's what's, that's what their death is forever, but they're also part of their life now too, right? They're conjoined. Your family will always include your love lost one and acknowledging this outwardly will help conversations around the world. 
Now, one of the things I want to bring up to you too, is as we close this all off, is that I'm all about talking about your grief. I'm all about sharing that grief. That's the reason why I created this group here. Uh, but I also wanted to, know, to remind you or to let you know, if you haven't heard before, that I do do one-on-one -on -one grief coaching which is different than counseling. Counseling, I'm not going to go there and go over your feelings and try to figure out what happened in your childhood. Coaching is when I'm literally saying, okay, this is where you are now. Let's figure out your action steps to get you to your next step in your journey. I've done this. I've, again, I've been a widow for close to seven years now. I wish I had this kind of program for me when I was going through the grief because literally I can take you through all the steps that I did painfully over four or six years then to three months it's a three pillar process it takes you from being lost in your grief not knowing what to do next and being to being a very such a secure person in your new identity that you're going to thrive um the reason why i brought this widow people here is so we can have this group and grow on but when you feel that you need more that you want to get past this and you want to figure out what your next step is um Let's talk. Let's see if I can help you. Um, I can't help everybody. You have to be the right fit. You have to be at the right point in your grief. Uh, and you have to be motivated. But if you are, and you want to figure out who that person is that you are, and how to get to your new life's goals and your life stages, and helping your child go through this too, I have the program for you. If you were really interested, let's see if we can talk some more. Give me a personal message on Messenger. You can give me a comment here. You can get, get me on Instagram. Love to talk more about you. Mm -hmm.